Question number four is a SUVAT problem here. We have a metal ball that is held above a tube of oil and the first part of the question here wants us to find out how long it's going to take for the ball to reach the surface of the oil. In other words, how long will the ball take to fall through 0 0.7 metres? We must assume that air resistance is negligible. So let's write down, first of all, what we know. Let's write down our SUVAT. So S here, the distance, the displacement is 0 0.70 metres. Our initial velocity, the ball is held stationary, is zero. Our final velocity, we uh, don't know about and we don't care about, so let's ignore that. Our acceleration here is 9.81 meters per second squared. And finally, our time is what we're interested in. So we need to find a, a SUVAT equation that uses S, U, A, and T. So the one we want is S equals UT plus half a t squared and straight away we can lose this term because we know that u is zero so we're left with s equals half a t squared which we can rearrange to get t equals 2 s divided by a all square rooted so that gives us 2 times 0 0.7 divided by 9.81. We're going to take the square root of that, which gives us 0 0.38 seconds. Part B shows us a velocity time graph of the ball as it travels through the oil. We can see here that the ball's velocity is getting lower as time goes by. And we need to complete these sentences. So the gradient of the graph is equal to the, well, for a velocity time graph, the gradient is always equal to the acceleration. Of the ball and the area under a velocity time graph is always equal to the displacement. Part II wants us to use this graph uh, to find the deceleration of the ball at time t equals 0 0.05 seconds. So to do this, we need to find the gradient of the graph at point A, and to do that, we need to draw a tangent to the line. So here I've drawn a tangent, and I'm going to use the equation here that acceleration is the change of velocity divided by the change of time. So I'm going to begin by working with time from 0 0.10 to 0. So Zero point one zero seconds will be our final time, and zero seconds will be our initial time, and the velocity at zero point one zero seconds, if we read across the graph here, will be one point two meters per second, and our velocity at zero seconds, our initial velocity here, is two point five. which gives us minus 1.3 divided by 0 0.1, which gives us minus 13 meters per second squared. Part III asks that we consider the forces acting on the ball to describe and explain the motion at two points, point A and point B. Well, we know that at point A, it is decelerating which means that there is a resultant force upwards which must be due to the drag force being greater than the weight. At point B we will see that the velocity is now no longer changing. So it is traveling at a constant velocity. Which must mean that there is a zero resultant force. Therefore drag 
that this point is equal to weight. This is another way of saying this is that it's reached terminal velocity. Part 4 asks us to describe the energy transfers taking place between point B and point C. You'll see here that the ball is travelling at a constant velocity during this period. Therefore, there is no change in kinetic energy. However, the ball is still falling. So, gravitational potential energy is being transferred into another form of energy. But that form of energy is not kinetic energy. The reason it's travelling at a constant velocity is because of the drag acting on it. And that drag is a frictional force. So the GPE is being transferred into heat energy.